know if I can do this anymore. Then why haven't you said anything before? Every post, every tweet, every picture is out there for the world to see. Maria Breeze is a woman who's made a career out of smiling through her unhappiness. We followed this woman since the beginning. You're always filming me, recording everything. It's like no matter how many times I try and draw the line between who I am and what I do, you just seem to blur them. Babe, please come back inside. Just leave me alone! Don't get emotional, all right? You focus on the drama and the accident. Her relationship with Pate, how good is that going? Is it gonna last? That's what the readers wanna know. All right, well, what do you want me to do, Peter? You want me to lie and say that Danny's a controlling egomaniac and that Maria's his captive? Sounds like a good angle to me. Since this all happened, the accident? Hey, if there's something you wanna say, then just say it. Who are you working what for? What are you talking about? I work it off the record with Danny, Lily. Danny, he does, please. It's beautiful, isn't it? Should we go in? I have a better idea. I can't seem to take my eyes off you. Well, Ash, Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. Obsessions, we just checked out the trailer. This is a thriller. This is a film that involves the trappings, the price of fame to a pretty extreme level. There's an element of a whodunit here. For Ash, how did you come up with the concept of this film? And how did you link up with Andrea? I did a film which was similar called Temptations, which was also a thriller. And uh, I did get a lot of uh, appreciation when I did that. And it's still there. You know, thrillers are something which, I don't know, I, I could call that my expertise, but something which I have always uh, liked. You know, you always want to have that feeling when people are watching that, it's very difficult to hold the audience. And if you are somehow able to hold them, uh, and that's the challenge I gave Sarah, my writer. I said, every 10 minutes, we need to have a hook. You know, people are watching the film and every 10 minutes, like, oh my God, oh my God. And, you know, you'll always see a couple of people in the audience who will have to tell you at the end of the film, ah, I knew it. I totally knew it. And, you know, you know from their face, they're just totally faking it just because they want to, like, look smarter. But, you know, we really work hard when we're scripting the film that we know exactly what the audience will be thinking at this time. And to be able to counter that, that is what we feel is the success. And at every given time, we were trying to do that. I mean, of course, I'm sure there would be a few people who would have guessed, yes, this is what's going to happen. And it, could have happened, but most times I'm positive that, you know, they were not able to guess uh, what we had planned. And like, uh, you know, like the ending of the film where the film ends after the first scroll titles, we leave a little bit uh, more for the audience so that they still want to see and we wanted to do a sequel to this. So, yeah, so this, uh, you know, this was always in my mind. Um, I know a lot of celebrities who are personal friends of mine and, um, you know, actors both in Hollywood and Bollywood. And I know what goes in their lives, you know, especially since a few of them are really close. And I know those challenges are uh, very interesting, you know, especially for the normal audience to kind of see how that works or not. So that uh, worked out well. And um, I feel we've done a fairly good job because this is probably the first time ever in whatever I've done in the past that we literally got not one, not two, but three concrete and great offers for distribution. And all the more reason we're totally, um, you know, excited that we definitely want to do a sequel. And uh, if all goes well and if the audience appreciates it as much as it is, we should soon be in uh, Thailand, uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> and so, so that's to answer your first question about Andrea. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, you know, self-tape auditions because it was COVID times. And uh, we, I think um, Andrea and Emma, Emma, who actually plays Ashley in the film, were the first few people whose auditions came to me. And uh, as far as Emma, I actually let it by. You know, I said, 
let me see who else is there. Probably we can get somebody better. And um, I kept, got, got a lot of people. But the best thing that I saw both, which I kind of felt as a director when I saw the uh, self-tapes, were that they were very, uh, you know, as if there was no effort in them. So it was like naturally them. And with Andrea, honestly speaking, I don't know if I've told her, but I liked her for both the roles. I could have, she, I think, auditioned for both Andrea, uh, uh, for Lily, as well as for Maria. And I was, it was difficult for me to actually choose between the two, whether we should have her as Maria or Lily. But I feel her vulnerability perfectly fitted her into uh, the li Lily's role and uh, uh, Olga's, um, you know, she's exotic, totally exotic. So she comes out as a rock star. So that's why we chose Olga for uh, the role of uh, the rock star Maria and the simple, sweet and uh, vulnerable, uh, absolutely gorgeous looking uh, Andrea got the role of uh, Lily. Awesome. And, and I should note too, real quick, that Obsessions is going to be out October 18th on US and Canada, major platforms for streaming and for cable. So definitely be on the lookout for that. That includes Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, all major cable and dish uh, providers, including Fios, Dish Network. The list goes on and on. We'll definitely link it in the show notes. Andrea, you did an awesome job as Louis Miller in the film. Do you have a media background? I felt like you kind of done this before when it comes to journalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I do not have a media background. Every role that you play, you do a little research, you figure out their the ins and outs of their life. And definitely, I, I love podcasts. I love watching YouTube and uh, listening to podcasts. And so I feel like I understood, um, you know, what goes into interviews like that, at least in some capacity before going into actually filming and but no back I, I must add here uh, i must add here that both uh, um the role of um, lily which andrea played and the role of uh, uh, danny which was played by bobby uh, slasky both of them you know even as an actor would surprise me but you know and i don't know if you would believe it or not both of them i never saw a script on set with the two of them. So they were so much into the role, they would actually start from anywhere. And I would tell them, okay, now let's do this. Okay, fine. I mean, that was super impressed. I didn't say this to her or him while shooting because you know that, that would have kind of made my job a little more tougher. But now that the film is all ready and you know, whatever <laughs> people are liking it, I have to give this credit to both of them. I love that. Well done. And it's great, Andrea, that you and your colleagues were were all prepared and off book and everything else. But when it comes to chemistry, that could be a different animal, especially in COVID times. If you have to do any table reads, you know, via Zoom or you can't be in the same room all the time. Sometimes I've talked to some filmmakers who have said, hey, we've had to film actors, you know, separate times. They weren't actually in the same room together during those particular scenes. So, Andrea, for you, was it tough to kind of develop that chemistry or did it come natural when everybody was finally gathered and on set? Obviously, the COVID was a, a big hurdle that we had to overcome, but protocols were taken and we were tested. And so <clears throat> once we were all together in the room, you know, with the masks and stuff, it's hard. But I tried to not tried to let that go as much as I could so that we could get into the because obviously chemistry and and feeling like you are connecting with your scene partner is so, so, so important. And if you can't get there i mean obviously you're not going to 100 percent of the time as an actor and sometimes you have to act with the tennis ball but it's so much easier to give that truth when you are connected to your scene partner and so i tried to let go of the covid thing and really just and i, and I do ultimately think it came naturally because it was so great working with olga and um and i think that we luckily we're, we we hit it off pretty well as friends. And so it made the transition kind of seamless and effortless. Ash, you did mention a sequel. So can you or Andrea <laughs> give us any details on this potential sequel? There's a guy in the, uh, you know, the tech room, the computer room. All I can say at this stage is that uh, he would be playing an important role in that sequel. 
All right. All right. You got, I, got, I got to ask you a follow up again. Nothing about the plot or anything else. But is this already in the works or, or is this something that you well, have on the books? You know, later honestly, the sequel was never, never a thought. But uh, when we were scripting the film and we came to the last end of the film and me and Sarah, we used to have like calls, uh, you know, all the time because we weren't really meeting, meeting as many calls we were having. But uh, I actually surprised her and I, you know, at the end of it and I said, you know what? Let's just do this. And I'm not going to say what, because that's what we want the audience to see. And that basically was like a chain effect. Okay, if we do this, we can do this. And then we can do this. And, and then we can bring that in. And then we actually had to go back into a few scenes to correct those, you know, and add those little nuances so that we could actually plan out. And uh, so that's kind of what we did. And uh, we've been working on a few drafts of what the sequel would be, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, people like the obsessions, you know, as it is. And then uh, we would have, uh, you know, like a tentative title, maybe Obsessions Again or whatever. We still have to think about it. Awesome. Well, definitely looking forward to that. We really do appreciate your time. Before we let you two go, we always like to ask all our guests some kind of random and rapid fire questions just to get to know them better. Are you ready? Awesome. Always. Favorite late night snack or cheat meal? Leftovers from like like the Thai place that I ordered earlier that day or something like that. <laughs> you know, the Trader Joe's has these amazing little ice creams. Like they look like little balls, like chocolate balls. I would love to have that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You know, Moki, M-O-C-H-I. Mo- yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Those ones. Yeah. Totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm getting hungry already. All right. <laughs> All right. Bes- besides Lily, who's your favorite obsessions character? The chef. <laughs> the chef definitely has has some uh, dirt, right? He knows where like the the bodies are buried and everybody's secrets. And yeah, that, that's that's a good answer. What about you, Ash? Well, I think uh, you know it has to be Maria and uh, Lily for me all the all the way, but. Uh, uh, you know, Eric uh, played a great role as well. You know, Eric uh, plays Lily's uh, assistant. And uh, he was very immersed into the role. The chef uh, was great. It's very difficult for me to say any one person yeah. because all of all of you really did amazingly well. We felt like a total team, like a family. And, uh, you know, whenever you do a project like this, um, you know, being the director, you can always say, yeah, you call the shots. But... We cannot do without each other, totally. We just need every small person on set. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, everybody, the set directors were great. The uh, Everybody was amazing. Nadia and uh, Tatiana did uh, the setting, so I must mention them. They, they were amazing. Uh, makeup was very good. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's not fair also for me to... Everybody was awesome, yeah. yeah. Who are some filmmakers and actors, actresses that that in, inspire you two? Are there any you just want to kind of shut out that have g- helped you get into film and, and show business? Rachel Brosnahan is a big one for me. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, Florence Pugh. I've been a big Florence Pugh girl ever since I saw Midsummer. Saoirse Ronan. She, I, I like her. Um, the, the thing that Ash was talking about earlier about how, you know, doing a big scene with a lot of anger and explosion and dialogue and everything is one thing, but then the simple, subtle, like pull in with, with your eyes. That's the, I've taken that from social running. So yeah, those are my three. I would definitely say George Lucas because I was totally, totally fortunate to have met him at his ranch. Um, So I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, Michael Bay, uh, you know, his style of, um, Direction is absolutely impressive. Uh, everything about his uh, work, but um, I'm probably the biggest fan in multiple ways of uh, Sylvester Stallone. You know, I mean, he. I feel whatever we see of him is in films, and whatever research that I have done about him and his life. I feel there should be a film on his life uh, which is absolutely new. Uh, so yeah, I mean, whether it's Rocky or whether it's whatever he's done, and uh, I feel a lot that's not even on camera is uh, I'm a huge fan of his. 
What was your most awkward moment in filming Obsessions? Was there anything wacky? I know with independent film, there could be things that happen that are kind of wacky and and chaotic at the time, but maybe make for a good story later. Well, I would think for you and uh, Olga, the dance part would be something. Yeah, Yeah. I forgot about that. I've repressed that from my memory. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this, this, um, there's a, not to give too much away, but halfway through the film there, we kind of slip into a little music video and we didn't, you know, I mean, I have a musical theater background, so I, I'm not completely uncomfortable dancing, but like, I need my, I like need rehearsal, but we didn't have the luxury of that much rehearsal for it. We, we met the choreographer and we kind of had to get into it the next day and both of us were nervous and we were like you know so we'd been so focused on our our scenes and and that all of that that we were like oh right we have to dance and um yeah so that was a little that was a little chaotic for but but, you know I was there and I was looking at it uh you know and I knew that whatever they do eventually it's going to look perfect because you know I mean they're not playing uh, dancers dancers they're just having right. fun right and they did a great job uh, the music was amazing veronica the girl who sung the song she was uh, you know she was phenomenal uh cameroon the guy who gave music was absolutely on the you know he was just like he just exactly knew what i wanted very rarely that happens so that was great so i guess uh, you know they did a good job and the song looks great and uh, to answer the same question as to uh, my moment, um, you know, when you're making a movie, there's like there's so much happening in front of you as a director, because you're kind of looking at those things that you've been thinking and planning forever coming true. But at the same time, there's a hundred times more that's happening in your mind, you know, because you want this, you want that, you want this, you want that, you want that shot as well. And you want a drone coming in, you want a trolley shot here. And, you know, and the time is never enough. I mean, especially the way I look at it, it's never enough. There's so much that you want to do. So that was throughout challenging. COVID was challenging, I would think, for the first two or three days, after which I just forgot about it. And I think most of the actors forgot about it because we were so much into... Um, reaching goals, if I may say that, you know, reaching somewhere, getting this done. But uh, a tough part, which looks absolutely uh, like a, you know, you know, if you watch the film, the opening titles, they look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, and I knew that they have to, they should be looking so gorgeous. It was completely underwater. Now that wasn't easy to shoot. It was very difficult. I mean, there were multiple things that, you know, we were inside the water, multiple cameras inside the water. The dresses that Olga was wearing were, you know, were not flowing the way we wanted them to flow. So there were multiple takes. There were lighting that was happening. So that took a complete shift to actually like a full day to perform. Plus we had to shoot at night because this was an outdoor place. So, yeah, so that was the most challenging part, but absolutely, I'm like really happy with it. And it was very gratifying when I'm seeing the opening titles and I'm looking at the audience. We had a screening here, you know, in Hollywood and I could see that. I mean, I was getting text messages at that time, like, wow, 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 this looks amazing. So I knew that when people are watching the film, you know, just the opening titles and my opening titles are always something that I really work on. I knew that, uh, you know, this this opening title is looking like it's going to hold my audience for the first 10 minutes. And that's how I took it. Like every 10 minutes I had that challenge. Can I hold the audience another 10 minutes? Can I hold them another 10 minutes? And I think, you know, if you watch the movie or if you will watch the movie, you're not going anywhere. Definitely. Hey, glad it, it did work out. So there you go. Kudos to you for that. And we'll get chatter on a high note. Why should people watch Obsessions? People should watch Obsessions because, um, well, like Ash said, it definitely is, it's going to keep you invested as the script goes on. And I think um, not only that, but I think that there is some really good, really good chemistry that 
goes on between um, Olga and Bobby, between me and Olga, but, you know, not just romantic, but there's, you know, even some chemistry that is not, not romantic between like Emma and Olga. And it just, I think we did a really good job as an ensemble and I'm really looking forward to people seeing that. See, my reason for watching Obsessions is I would tell the audience, if you believe in love, <laughs> watch the film. Because that's, you know, I always say this, there's nothing, I mean, there's, you know, there's one kind of love, which is like, just to love, love. You know, if it's real love, it's only real love if you're obsessed. So if you're obsessed <laughs> or if you're in love, then just go ahead and watch the film and stay in love forever. Very well said. Love that. Thank you two so much for the time. Again, Obsessions coming out October 18th. All major streaming and cable platforms in the U.S. and Canada. That includes Fios, Dish, DirecTV, Comcast, Spectrum, Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. The list goes on and on. Ash, Andrea, thank you so much for your time.